Another DCMA 14 point is negative float. So with those relationships that you have, you're looking at how much time is in between two tasks. And especially if you have more than one predecessor or successor to a task, you're gonna create that float because not everything is on a critical path. It makes you look at your relationships, but a negative float means that you can't meet the deadline or the date predicted. When you put a schedule in, if you've created a deadline or a must finish on constraint to your very, very end task to say everything has to finish by this date. And if you had that must finish on, and like I said, the predecessor task moved past it, then you've just created negative float. When those predecessor tasks move past it, that's a negative float saying, hey, this stayed here, but you went past it, so you can't meet it. If your project has any negative float, it's saying there's a conflict. So when you open your project file, there's gonna be a schedule conflict saying you can't meet your deadline, you gotta go fix it. And how you can look at it is go look in the total floats column and just filter on all the negative tasks and that's why you can't meet it. So a recap on total float is it's not like the lead. So the lead is when you have a predecessor that is has a negative number. This is when your total slack field has a negative number. So you're identifying those tasks with a negative number as the float. And why is this important? A negative float just means that there's a schedule conflict and you cannot meet the deadline. So we're going to be looking again at that total slack column and then we're going to count how many incomplete tasks have a total slack with a negative number and divide that count by the incomplete task. DCMA has a tolerance of 0% is allowed because again, it means you cannot meet your goal. Your plan cannot be met. So you need to work towards mitigating that negative float. Why is it there? An example of negative float is say you have a deadline on this task and it's where that green arrow is, but yet your task went longer than that. It's gonna count that as a negative float because you went past your deadline. Setting a deadline doesn't mean constrict you where you can't go further. It allows you to still go past what your deadline was. When you go past that deadline, you have a negative float. So that's the other thing is if you have a negative float for a task, look to see if it has a deadline on it. If it has a deadline, that's where the negative float is coming from. And then you need to go back to your stakeholders and see if that deadline needs to be reset. The other example of the negative float is your milestone for project completion at the very end. If you have it set as a must finish on, it's gonna stay where it is, but yet all the other tasks that are before it are gonna go past it. So that's the other part of where a negative float would come from. It means you set this date to say you need to finish your project by this date and it's saying you can't. So that's why this metric is important. It's saying you cannot meet the deadline that you have set for your project or a certain task. And how to calculate this is you're going to count the number of tasks that have a negative float. In this example, we have a one, but we have 441 tasks total. So one task out of 441 is a 0.23. That's close to zero, but it's not. You still have one task you need to figure out why that task has a negative float and mitigate it. We're looking at the total slack column again, and you can see here that because I have no successors, the very last task is gonna have zero. So that's on the critical path. But a way to change this is either to add a deadline or a must finish on constraint. So I'm gonna say that the deadline for this was in the past, and it was October 1st. If I say that, you can see now how the total slack changed to a negative number. So DCMA wants to look to see if you have any negative slack because it means that you are not able to meet your project goal. And what you had said as a deadline or where you were tracking to, you cannot complete the schedule as planned. So that's what DCMA is looking at, at is, do you have any negative slack? If so, you need to go fix it. So you need to go look at any of your must finish on constraints or your deadlines and see which one is causing the negative float. Then you have to go back to your stakeholders and make sure that you are portraying the correct schedule to them to say, hey, our original deadline date has passed and we cannot meet it. How do we wanna mitigate this? It is your job as a scheduler to let them know because again, this is a forecasting model. You've gotta tell them that they can no longer meet their schedule and fix it so that you now have no negative slack. So a recap of negative float is it's identifying all the tasks that have negative numbers in the total slack column. So you're going to look at that total slack field and identify anything that has a negative float in it. If that task has a negative float, it means that it can't meet the deadline that you've set for it. Somewhere along the line, you have set a constraint and it's saying that you can't meet your project's end date. 
if you're going according to plan. So the goal is you're not allowed to have any task that has negative flow. Because again, this is just an indicator that you can't meet the need date. So you need to go back and look at what's driving that negative load and mitigate it.